epidemiologist. And every once in a while, I like to do a check-in. And let's check in. Ray Watt, uh, we're almost two years into this. How are you doing? I'm doing okay. Uh, it's become kind of commonplace now, almost a regular part of our lives. It's horrific to say, but hopefully not for much longer. Julie, how about you? How are you doing? Um, I'm freezing, <laughs> but that's also keeping me indoors. It's Mother Nature's way of saying, stay home, y'all. Yeah, and uh, it's one of those situations where hopefully you can see some light at the end of the tunnel as opposed to building more tunnel. And Ray Watt, we've been building more tunnel with Omicron. Do you see the light at the end of the tunnel? I do. So the modeling is is interesting. Uh, IHME, the Institutes for Health Metrics and Evaluation, has published their models for various countries around the world. For Canada, they anticipate... 200,000 cases per day sometime in late January or early February. But that's a horrific number. Um, but the, the good news is that a, a high peak means a short duration wave. And we'll be done with this wave hopefully in the next two months at the most. So by spring, there should be enough immunity that maybe we won't have to deal with waves anymore. And 200,000 cases, that tells me that as I look at that number of hospitalizations, we're here in Manitoba, it's increased to 378. Just based on the numbers, the hospitalization numbers go up as well, don't they? That's exactly right. So the hospitalization rate, um, last I saw, varies from like 0.1% to 1.7%. That's the percentage of people who end up being hospitalized who get infected. That's a tiny percentage. But given the large numbers of people being infected, that's a large number of people ending up in the hospitals. So the healthcare system is definitely under crisis. And I'm, I'm looking at the numbers through gritted teeth. I hope we can bear this without too much suffering. And ultimately, it's we're not near the peak of what we saw, which was in December of 2020, when we had the most people ever hospitalized, at least here in Manitoba. And while we're not at that number yet, and while our ICU number does remain low-ish, I guess, at about 39 people, the problem is that a lot of those healthcare workers are sick themselves or have to isolate. That's exactly right. We're looking at a, a double crisis here, a crisis in large numbers of people being infected and a crisis in healthcare capacity, which is probably the lowest it's been since the pandemic began because of the reason you point out. When we talk about hospital beds, we're not talking about a physical bed. We're talking about a dozen people to staff that bed. And they are burnt out. You cannot replace human resources in a matter of weeks. It takes years, if not decades, to do so. So that's why we have to slow transmission as much as possible to prevent the overwhelming of the healthcare human resources capacity. Will experts like yourselves work on figuring out what the optimal number of healthcare staff is. I don't know if any province has this right, because clearly we don't have enough capacity right now, but right now is an unusual time. So how do you figure out for governments how many nurses, um, you know, housekeeping staff, doctors and the like are actually required to, to run the system where it can manage in an unusual circumstance, but isn't, you know, paying to have too many people on staff when it's a little quieter? It's a good question. It's a question for the healthcare systems people. There's an entire field called healthcare systems, and it's their job to think about these things. A, a, an aspect of that question, though, is to ask ourselves, are we focusing too much overall on treatment and not on prevention? If we spend more of our healthcare dollars on preventing people from needing the healthcare system, we wouldn't need as many people running the, um, you know, the primary care system. Uh, and North America has been slow on that train. The Europeans do a bit better. Um, hopefully, this pandemic is a wake-up call on a number of fronts, including reinvestment in preventative care. Well, the premiers and the prime minister are meeting right now. And while I agree with you as far as the long-term needs, often the politicians are about what have you done for me and what can you do for me now. Pfizer's CEO says work is being done to create a vaccine that's more effective against Omicron and other variants. And they're also saying that uh, Pfizer's CEO is not yet clear if a fourth dose will be necessary to bridge any gap. Uh, address those two, if you will, Raywan. Yeah. So the creation of an Omicron-specific uh, vaccine um, or a new variant-specific vaccine is underway by both Pfizer and Moderna. Is that useful? Sure. Why not? Uh, it will create optimal immunity for those who have not yet been vaccinated and who expect to be vaccinated. So that's much of the world still, frankly. 
not just Canadians. For those of us who received three doses, I don't know what four doses offers. Um, if, it, if it turns out a new variant arises, which really compromises our neutralizing uh, antibodies, maybe that will be required, but I don't see that happening quite yet. Um, I think we got to focus on vaccinating the world to prevent the arisal of new variants and to crush this thing once and for all. So if we're going to produce new vaccines for the rest of the world, they may as well be focused on the strains that are circulating. There's also work being done on a pan-coronavirus vaccine. That's a vaccine that's good for all coronaviruses, regardless of variants, and that would be a game changer. Ultimately, uh, as we've spoken with you for now almost 24 months, you've been able to kind of see what's coming down the pipe. Um, we're hearing anywhere from a couple of weeks to a peak in this to uh, much longer. Where do you land based on what you've seen in other jurisdictions around the world? Yeah, it's a tough question. It depends on where you are in Canada. <clears throat> Different parts of the province will peak earlier uh, and later and depends on what kind of mitigation tools are in place and how well they're being used. So Nova Scotia, for example, is doing a very good job in crushing transmission and um, they're going to you know, slow down their wave appreciably. I suspect that much of Canada is going to peak at the end of this month. You know, uh, If we can slow down transmission, maybe the beginning of February. Uh, um, so is that a good thing? I'm not sure because if it peaks it's the height of the peak that matters. We don't want to get too high because then we, we threaten the healthcare system. Um, but at the same time, the faster we get through this, the better. So the, the merciful news is that uh, this Omicron wave, which hopefully is the last great wave of the COVID battle, will be a short one. Ray Wadionandian is with us from the University of Ottawa. The Jets report and Kelly Moore in eight minutes. Ray Watt, there are a lot of parents that we have a, a week of at-home uh, learning and then, uh, unless something changes, going back to school next week. Uh, talk about going back to school. Many of the authorities are saying that's the best place to be, but there are a lot of parents, especially the young ones, young children, that are nervous about this and nervous about the numbers that you're citing right now, that somehow they're going back and they may fall victim as well. Talk about that. So, yeah, a lot to unpack there. First, we have to distinguish between individual risk and population risk. At the individual level, for most people, if you get this disease, you're not going to suffer. I know lots of people, lots of loved ones who are COVID positive right now, and they have sniffles, if any symptoms at all. So for most people, by the, the power of vaccination, uh, you're going to be fine. It's just that if a lot of people get this disease at once, then a tiny fraction of a large number is a very large number. That's why we are scared for the healthcare system. Right? So the, the risk we're talking about is the population, not for individuals. I don't think individuals should panic. It's uh, the system should uh, be panicky because it's in crisis. Now, do kids belong in school? Yeah, kids always belong in school because, you know, uh, for a lot of reasons. That's where they have their, their friends, that's where their uh, mental health is best taken care of, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But uh, I've been uh, vocal about the need to, to keep kids back for a couple of weeks while we figure this out. And we have to deploy the appropriate tools in schools to slow down transmission there. Um, those tools include proper mask wearing, N95 masks, HEPA filters, um, uh, symptom checks, rapid tests, and so forth. Why do I want to slow down transmission in schools? Because there is still a, a fairly large proportion of children, especially those under five, who can't be vaccinated. And for them, the, the individual risk is higher than for the rest of us who've been vaccinated. Now again, most will be just fine. It's just that a few won't. So I would like to protect those few um, who won't be a few if everyone gets sick all at once. So for those kids who are nervous about going back to school, I want to remind them, if you follow the public health guidance, if the mask wearing is great, if the HEPA filters are in place, if we do symptom checks to prevent people from being symptomatic around you, and if everybody in your vicinity is vaccinated, you have a lower probability of being infected. And if you do become infected, you have a very small chance of having serious uh, disease and symptoms. It's just that for those few who do get bad symptoms, we don't want them in the hospital. What about N95 masks involving children? Some guidance say that's the best way to perhaps protect them. Others are saying they're too young to be wearing it. And again, fit is important. I even have a hard time getting a proper fit because I have a smaller face. <laughs> Yeah, now I'm not a mask expert, that's a bit of a clinical question, but I will say this, the, the readings and analyses I've done on mask wearing suggest that you don't need to be fit tested unless you are a healthcare worker. 
the testing is this process by which we make sure that the seal is perfect on your face. Just a, a close fitting mask is good enough. So a store bought N95 candy pie that hugs your face is good enough. Um, can kids tolerate it? Many can. Some will struggle. That's going to be a learning process. That's, uh, that's between a parent and a child uh, to figure out that process. Um, uh, did they do make child size ones now. Canada Strong Mask is a good company um, that I use, and uh, they produce child size ones. I don't know what more to, advice to give parents around this, except to say we do our best, right? Uh, and I be understand that, but but uh, officials here are saying our children don't necessarily need N95s. You're saying that N95s would be best. They would be best. Now, we don't want perfect to be the enemy of good. If you can't get away with best, then you get away with a little bit less than best. So a three-ply mask reduces transmission by about 40%, and N95 will by 95%. It's all about um, the delay in infection. So if, if you and I are both wearing surgical masks and one of us is infected, it'll take less than an hour to infect the other person if we're in an enclosed area. If you're both wearing N95s, it'll take several hours. So we delay that process. Um, but it, all, it also matters if other mitigation tools are in place. HEPA filter is in place. Are we distanced? Is there ventilation in the room? In which case, the delay lasts even longer. So if you're wearing a three-ply mask and you have these other things layered on top of it, these other mitigation tools, then you can get away with it. For the adults, absolutely. I think they should be wearing N95s because they can, and there's no excuse not to. Ray Watt and we always appreciate your perspective on this. Thank you again for joining us. Thank you very much. University of Ottawa, epidemiologist.